calificas para ser legal? ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. Good morning. Welcome to the English version of our weekly radio show, Para Ser Legal to Be Legal. My name is Andrés Mejer, and I am a speaker, published author, uh, and an immigration attorney. Please don't hold that part against me. Uh, so I'm here to explain to you, we got a great program today. We're going to talk about the DREAM Act. Uh, what is the DREAM Act? What's the new bill that was submitted just last week? How does it affect you? What are its chances for success? Um, who, who is it meant to serve? Those that have DACA, TPS, and something called uh, DED, um, Deferred Enforced Departure. Now, what is DACA? Well, I'm sorry, what is the new DREAM Act? Second part, what is this path to citizenship that is discussed in, in immigration? Path to citizenship, path to legal status, what does it mean? What's the difference? We'll break it down. We'll explain it to you. Third, what can I do today? How having DACA or TPS can assist me in getting my green card? That's something that I could do today. And I better do it soon um, because, you know, DACA and TPS, we don't know how long they have. Lastly, I want to talk about Oswaldo Lopez as a story that could happen to any immigrant. Um, out of North Carolina, he was de detained by, by, by ICE. I want to explain the story and his situation and why it is so important that if you have a path to legal status, you search and apply for it today. Oswaldo didn't, uh, and he suffered for it. And I'll explain why in just a couple of minutes. So I'm Andres Mecher, and now we're going to talk about the DREAM Act. What is it? Well, the DREAM Act has been proposed numerous times. Uh, this is not the first, not the second. I don't even think this is the third. But this one is bipartisan. It was presented by Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois, Democrat, and Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican from uh, uh, South Carolina. Now, Lindsey Graham was also in the Gang of Eight for the last immigration reform bill. But lately, he's become a loud Trump supporter. Uh, interesting enough, since he was a Trump hater before, he had some very strong words against Trump, but once he became president, I guess he changed his mind. Um, so him and Dick Durbin presented this bipartisan bill. It's meant to help those, you know, the DACA holders, the, the kids that came here as minors and have grown up in the States. Now, there was a separate bill presented by um, Senator Chris Van Hollen from Maryland and Senator Chris Ben Cardin from Maryland, both Democrats, called the SECURE Act that protects TPS holders and deferred enforced departure. That's defer deferred enforced departure was for about 400,000 Liberians that was done in the 90s under Clinton and has extended all this time. In total, this, we'll just call it the DREAM Act for simplicity's sake. We're gonna, we're gonna label both bills as one. Um, can help about 2.7 million immigrants. So there's about 11 million undocumented in the United States today, for, so that you understand. DACA has about 700,000 people that have applied for it, actually over 700, but less than 800,000. Uh, TPS has 300,000. Uh, DED has about 400,000. Um, but because of the way that DACA was written and when it was written, when it became law in 2000, well, it never became law. Uh, but it was only an executive order. But when it was implemented in 2012, there were certain requirements. Like you had to have been to the United States before you turned 16. You had to have been in school. You had to have graduated from school. Um, so those limitations prevented some people from applying. And since the program was ended by Trump, people who would now f would, would fit the criteria but were, but were not 15 years old couldn't apply then. They can now. So... There were people that qualified, but they were not 15 years or older, which was the requirement in order to apply. So this gives a path to legal status. First, it's a conditional green card. What does that mean? It means you, you're going to have to apply again for the permanent green card. Two stages. Uh, now, conditional green card has four requirements. One, you have to have been... In the U.S., four years before the bill became law. Obviously, it's not law yet. Second, you had to have entered the United States when you were 17 years old or younger. Basically, before your 18th birthday, you had to enter the United States. DACA said before your 16th birthday. So this expands it. 
not disqualified by a serious crime. Now, we don't know what exactly that means, but under DACA, domestic violence, DUI, uh, drug charges, certain crimes of moral turpitude are an automatic disqualifier. It remains to be seen whether... Now, that was by far the lowest barrier to be disqualified was DACA. It's lower than TPS, lower than a green card, lower than a citizenship, lower than anything else. Basically, most crimes um, result in a disqualification. It's either a serious crime or three or more smaller crimes. Um, so we'll figure out what that says. Last requirement is you need to have your GED or your high school degree. It's not enough for you to say you're in school. You need to have completed it according to this uh, proposal. Now, once you have that, for a certain period of time, again, we don't know how long, in order to file for the full green card, the full become a full lawful permanent, permanent resident, remove the condition, you have to earn a college degree. It could be a four-year degree or it could be a two-year degree like an associate's. It can also be a technical school. Some education for a program at least two years um, in some accredited school. Now, it can't be something I opened in my garage last month, I'm paying you money and I'll give you a degree. That's not going to fly. It needs to be something that's accredited and accepted by Department of Education. So that's one avenue. Another avenue is you go to the military. A third avenue is you need to be employed in the U.S. for three or more years. My opinion, the, the, that last section will probably never. Uh, uh, it's too low. It's too simple, meaning... Most programs have a requirement that you're working. Um, DACA could easily have the same thing. Now, it would be nice if they kept that in, if it gets approved, but it's unlikely because it's a little too easy. Um, now, what needs to happen? Well, a bill was proposed in the House of Representatives about two weeks ago. The bill was proposed in the Senate. Senate is controlled by Republicans. House of Representatives is controlled by, by, by the Democrats. Both houses need to approve legislation. If they're not similar, it goes to a committee to try to hash out the differences. And then it goes to the president for his signature. Now, I've always said, if President Trump wants to do something on immigration, he can. He has the clout. You know, he has the base. Um, he's in a position where he can do it. Now, he's shown no willingness to do that. All he talks about is deportation. All he talks about is how immigrants are criminals and they come from, quote, unquote, shithole countries. Forgive me, that's his, his term, not mine. Um, you know, so I, I, will it happen? I don't know. It all depends if he actually wants to be elected. Again, if he wants to show that he can actually run the country or if he just wants to go and talk about how evil immigrants are. So only time will tell which way will go. Point of it is, this is a path to citizenship. Why? DACA is not why is that? Simply because just having DACA by itself will never get you a green card and will never get you citizenship. This bill, if you follow each of the steps, you will ultimately be able to apply and receive your citizenship. If it gets passed, you're going to get a green card. First a conditional one, then you're, going to remove to, then you're going to apply to remove those conditions. Then once time passes, probably five years, maybe longer, you can then apply to become a U.S. citizen. DACA or TPS never granted you your green card. It does not give you by itself a lawful, doesn't make you become a lawful permanent resident. That's why it's not a path to citizenship. What it says is basically a path to citizenship means once you pass, once you apply and get approved for each stage, you will be a U.S. citizen. If you choose to, you don't have to. Path to legal, sat legal status just means you apply for something, you get approved, you receive status. Think of a student visa. You're here for a certain period of time. Um, think of a tourist visa. It gives you a, a status for a period of time. Um, but without more, a student will never become a lawful permanent resident or, or a U.S. citizen unless employer applies for him or her, family applies for him or her. There has to be another application process that isn't created by this legislation. 
So that's the difference. Legislation that's path to citizenship by its terms. If you follow each of the steps, you can, should you choose to, and you darn well should, apply for citizenship and get it. Path to legal status is just that. It normalizes the situation. It gives you permission to stay here for a period of time. If you violate the terms of that status, you could lose it and can be deported. U.S. citizen can't be deported unless they lose their citizenship because they procured it through fraud. All right? So now we talked about what is the DREAM Act? Who, does it, who, do, who is it based to help? Um, what is a path to citizenship? versus path to legal status, and why this DREAM Act is a path to citizenship. Now I want to talk to you, third part of this show, we're really ambitious today. We're trying to do four things today. We usually don't get past three. So bear with me. I'm going a little quick. If you have any questions, you can contact us um, on Facebook. I'll do my best to get, to get in touch with you, either now or, or after the show. You can also give us a call, 888-888-0307. Request a copy of my book, um, Paths to Legal Status, happy to provide it to you. If you're in New Jersey, I'll mail it to you. If you're outside New Jersey, I'll only give you an electronic copy, but you still get it. Uh, so now, if I have DACA or TPS, how can I get my green card? Is there a way? There is. How does DACA or TPS help me in getting my green card? Meaning I'm becoming a U.S. citizen. So imagine I came here when I was six years old. Imagine that when I turned 17, um, DACA, you know, 2012, DACA was implemented. I applied and I received DACA. And when I turned 18, I already had DACA. Now I'm 26 years old. I am married to a U.S. citizen and she wants to apply for me. How can, how does this help me? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you accrue what's called unlawful presence when you turn 18. What that means is every day after 18, that you are now an adult, you can make your own decisions. If you stay more than six months in the U.S., you accrue unlawful presence. If you accrue, and that means if you ever leave, you're not allowed to come back for either three years or ten years, depending on how much unlawful presence you've accumulated. If it's more than a year, you're barred for ten years, unless you apply and receive a waiver. So. The way to understand this is look at a family-based petition. Family-based petition, we've talked about this before, so I'm going to go a little fast. Family-based petition has two main components. One, you got to document the relationship. It really is my father, I promise. Birth certificate says so. DNA test says so. Mom is usually easier because mom's always on a birth certificate. They always know who mom is. Don't always know who dad is. Um, But what happens if born out of wedlock? You know, that can that can get a little hazy. It can get complicated. But Document the relationship. It really is my brother. It really is my my parents or my spouse. Now, spouse is a little bit different because I could go in front of a judge and be married tomorrow. That doesn't mean an immigration perspective that it's a legitimate marriage. Do we have kids? You know, do we live together? Do we have bills in common? I have our emotional, uh, financial, uh, and social lives been joined together? That's what we need to show to document that relationship. The moment that gets approved, then... I can apply for my green card. Now, that either happens in the U.S. or outside the U.S. In order for me to adjust, in order for me to get my green card inside the U.S., I need two things. One, legal entry, or two, sorry, one legal entry and two, an immediate relative. An immediate relative means a relationship that's close enough to me as the law defines and they must be a U.S. citizen. So my spouse, my parent if I'm a minor. If I'm an adult, my parents are not my immediate relatives anymore. But my child is, even if he's adult. If he's over 21, he's a U.S. citizen, he can apply for me. That's immediate relative, but it doesn't go the other way around. It doesn't make sense, but that's the law. So now DACA and TPS... Prior to Trump, DACA had a means to get a travel permit. So there are people that applied for what was called, is called advanced parole um, for education reasons, uh, humanitarian reasons, um, uh, school related reasons. I could travel, think of foreign exchange. I could travel outside the U.S. with permission and then enter the United States 
with that permission. That is a legal entry. So I may have come in illegally, and using the example I came when I was six, um, illegally. Um, I, when I was 17, DACA came around and I got DACA. Um, and at 18 or 19, I left the U.S. with permission, visited my home country, came back after a week or two. I now have legal, legal entry and my wife apply, wants to apply for me. In a year to a year and a half, because it used to be six months under Obama, but now it's over a year, she, my wife applies for me, I will get my citizenship. Why? Because when I, I'm sorry, I'll get, become a law permanent resident and years in the future I'll be able to apply for citizenship. But I'll get my green card without having to leave the U.S., without having to apply for a waiver, because I never accumulated unlawful presence, number one. And number two, I have legal entry. Now let's use the same example, but I never used advanced parole. So I entered when I was six, by the time I was 17, I got DACA. When I was 18, I've maintained DACA and my wife's a US citizen. I do not have a legal entry. I will have to leave the US, but because I never accrued unlawful presence, I don't need a waiver. So the moment that she applies for me, the moment that gets approved, that by itself takes seven to 12 months. Then. Documents get sent to the National Visa Center. From there, it gets sent to the embassy in my home country. I choose what embassy I'm going to get interviewed at. In my case, it would be the U.S. Embassy in Santiago because uh, that's where I was born in Chile. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's my, my country of origin. So I would go back to, to, back to Chile. I would get interviewed there and I'd be back in two to four weeks. No waiver necessary. It's a short vacation, forced and somewhat stressful. But at the end of the day, it's relatively easy in comparison to what we're talking about for everybody else. Now, if what, what happens if I have TPS? Uh, well, TPS, depending on where you live, your life might be easier or might be harder. Why do I say that? In some jurisdictions, take Philadelphia, for example, applying and receiving TPS is by itself an admission to the U.S., just by being approved to TPS, I lawfully entered, even though it's kind of a fiction. So I entered, use the same example. I came here when I was six, illegally. Um, I applied for TPS and I got TPS. If I got it before I, was, before I became 18, I didn't accrue in love presence. Now I will tell you, I don't know a single client that ever fit that fact pattern. Every, every client I had for TPS came in as an adult. Um, I'm sure there are some kids that, 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 that got it. I just haven't met them. Um, I live in Philadelphia. My wife's a U.S. citizen. Because I have TPS with no, no legal entry, no leaving, applying, and coming back to the U.S. legally, I can get my green card. I become a law permanent resident in the U.S. Same thing in New Jersey. I will be denied. Why? Because New Jersey does not agree that applying and receiving TPS is a lawful admission. I think they're wrong. Now, interesting enough, we're in the third circuit. You know, the, the country is divided by circuits for, for, for federal court purposes. Pennsylvania and New Jersey is the same third circuit. But Philadelphia has one outcome. New Jersey so far has it because no one's challenged it. That needs to happen. And it needs to go to the third circuit and the third circuit to say, yes, just like the Sixth Circuit and the Ninth Circuit have said, uh, yes, TPS alone is a lawful admission. So let's say you're in New Jersey, not Philadelphia, um, but you applied for advanced parole under TPS because that's allowed. Why is it allowed? Because Trump can't stop it. It's from Congress. It's not from the executive. He can't just eliminate it with a pen. So if you left and, and re-entered with advanced parole, that is a lawful admission. Your wife can apply for you, even if you accrued a lawful presence, and you will be able to adjust your status in the U.S. If you never left, and you're in New Jersey, and you don't want to litigate, you don't want to fight for yours and everybody else's right to under just lawful admission, uh, well, you can apply for a waiver. So once the relationship is approved, uh, you apply for the waiver, you leave under the, under, under the 
once the waiver is approved, you leave, you get into, and you come back, and you're a lawful permanent resident. So that is how DACA or TPS can help you achieve legal status. But the point is, DACA by itself is not a path to citizenship. You need something like a family-based petition to be able to apply and receive your green card. Now, let's talk about why it is so incredibly important that you find an alternative to DACA or TPS. Um, in case you don't know, da- Trump is has done his very best to eliminate DACA and TPS. Now, in the fall of 2017, he ended DACA. Like that. No advance notice. September 5th said, as of today, done. And we will, we will not accept new petitions as of today. And we're only going to accept renewals for a certain period of time. <clears throat> and those 800,000 people that had it have to leave. Now, court said, not, not so fast. I don't agree in the way that you did it. I don't believe that you had the proper intent. You didn't follow the right procedure. So the courts have stopped Trump from eliminating DACA on procedural grounds. Well, they're fixing that. Um, and it's just a matter of time. At some point, look, just like the Muslim travel ban, ban, it took Trump three tries until he got it right. But he ultimately got a ban approved by the Supreme Court, and he implemented it in a very inappropriate manner, and that's going to be the next lawsuit. But the point is, DACA, he's trying to eliminate, and he will eliminate at some point. That affects 800,000 people. Uh, TPS, another 300,000 people from El Salvador, Honduras, Sudan, and Haiti ended it. And some he extended for a little while. And again, the courts have stopped him and said, the way you went about doing it is not appropriate. Do it right. Uh, And that's what he's looking to do now. In the meantime, those cases are going through the courts of appeals. They'll ultimately get to the Supreme Court. And we'll see what the Supreme Court does it. Point is, in the next two years, it is possible... DACA and TPS are gone, and everybody that's on it has no more legal protection. That's another million plus people that could be put in removal proceedings, in addition to the 1.1 million that are already in removal proceedings. Uh, I mean, there, if you don't think Trump's trying to break the immigration system, um, well, I don't know what planet you're living in. It's certainly not on planet Earth, because it's pretty darn clear he's going to break the system. Now let's talk about Oswaldo Lopez. Why? Oswaldo is crucial to understand because it could happen to anybody. Any immigrant could, could, could want, find himself in Oswaldo's situation. Now, Oswaldo lives in Raleigh, North Carolina. He entered the United States when he was 18 months old. He's had DACA. He's, at the time this happened, he was 20. He's soon to turn 21. So Oswaldo meets a girl on Tinder. They're texting back and forth. They're speaking. Um, they meet up for a date. Um, towards the end of it, they go. They start making out in the parking lot of a park. The park closed after sundown, after eight o'clock. Uh, it is about it was just before midnight. Police comes in, says, "Hey, what's going on?" Um, now Oswaldo thought the girl was twenty years old. She said she was twenty years old. In her application in, on Tinder also says she's 20 years old. Well, she wasn't. She was only 15. And even though she had, you know, her documentation was uh, uh, was wrong. I mean, she had a fake license uh, because she, she, she was a minor. But Oswaldo thought he was an adult and he took every reasonable precaution. He was arrested for loitering with a minor, potentially could serve three years jail time, um, he was charged with trespass for being in the parking lot of a public park when, it's, when it was closed. Now, they also found marijuana in the car, so they charged him with possession. He got charged, ICE took him, and he got placed in removal proceedings. Now, in North Carolina, and I'm by no means an expert on North Carolina law, but the law says the different, you know, you can have contact, sexual or otherwise, with a minor. As long as the difference is not more than five years. Five years. Oswaldo then was 19 and, and the girl was 15. That's four. The police and the prosecutor made a mistake. They should never have charged him with that felony. But the moment it happened, 
It triggered ICE because that was a serious crime, and ICE picked him up. He had DACA. So at the end of it, the only thing he was convicted was for trespass. That's it. In New Jersey, that's a disorderly person's offense. It's not even considered a misdemeanor. But in North Carolina, it's a misdemeanor. They gave him 18 months probation. Now, he had DACA. ICE picked him up. While he was detained, his DACA expired. Even though he had applied to renew it, he didn't get an answer. Uh, he was in removal proceedings when he had DACA. More than that, the judge deported him. He still has DACA. Now, they can't actually deport him while he has DACA because the whole point of DACA is um, protection from deportation. But understand what we're talking about. He has protection from deportation, but he's still in removal proceedings. Is that fair? Hell no. Is it just? Absolutely not. Why should he pay for the time, energy, and expense of, to protect from deportation when he already has protection from deportation? Shouldn't happen. But it is. Listen, we have two clients in a similar situation. The reason why this is important is because Oswaldo, uh, short of having drugs in the car, and we don't know whether it was his or hers, none of the articles explain that, it may very well have been hers, not his. But because it was in his car, and at the time she didn't say, yes, it's mine, he got charged, and they both got charged. Um, trespass, misdemeanor. So for DACA, you're disqualified if you're convicted of a significant misdemeanor or three or more misdemeanors. Here, he was convicted of one. That's not enough to revoke his DACA. It's not enough to disqualify him. But despite that, he was in removal proceedings. He had a $15,000 bond. He spent tens of thousands of dollars in his legal defense between the criminal case and the immigration case. He had to go and try it. Now, he then appealed it. So he has protection from deportation, but now he has an order of deportation that he shouldn't have had. And now he's appealing that. This could happen to anybody. If you have DACA, if you have TPS, if you're a green card holder, you're a lawful permanent resident, apply for citizenship. Apply for legal status. Don't just lay back and say, oh, I'm fine. Green card, same citizenship. No, it isn't. If, Os if Oswaldo was a green card holder and he had been convicted of those crimes, he'd be deported and he'd be gone. Simple. Convicted for, for sex abuse of a minor or sexual conduct with a minor, I mean, that's an aggravated, that's, that could be an aggravated felony, which in immigration terms means you have almost no defense to deportation. Um, so, in summary, we talked about first, what is the DREAM Act? What's the new DREAM Act? Is it going to pass? Is it not? I don't know. Certainly you can if Trump wants, actually wants to do something. Has he shown an inclination to doing that? Zero. All he's done is talk about how evil immigrants are and how bad that they are. How bad people like me are. Like, we don't add anything to the country. Um, you know, I, I employ 20 people. But I guess that doesn't matter because I'm an immigrant. Um, that's Trump for you. So is it, can he do it? He can. But it needs to pass the Senate. It needs to pass the House of Representatives. And it has to be signed by the President. Then we spoke about, okay, what is a path to legal status versus path to citizenship? Why is the DREAM Act provide a path to citizenship. What does that mean? Third, we talked about how can I get a green card? How can I become a lawful permanent resident? By How can DACA or TPS help me get my green card? And lastly, story that everybody should hear, Oswaldo Lopez. Um, that should be push anybody that, that has never sought help for, to, to get legal status, should go and find out if they qualify. If they know they qualify for something, they should do something about it before they wind up in immigration proceedings. Today, you know, the process might be, re it might be difficult, but it becomes so much more difficult if you're in removal proceedings at the same time, particularly in this climate. Don't wait. Pick up the phone, give us a call, call somebody else, I don't care, but do something and achieve legal status. Our, so if you want to talk to us, 888-888-0307. You can also find us on Facebook, Anders Mecher Law, uh, because you're seeing this video. You can also find us on the website, AndersMecherLaw.com. 
I'm Andres Mejer. Until next time, thank you for your time. Calificas para ser legal. ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. 1-800-333-3676. 1-800-333-3676.